Hey everyone, welcome back to the Prime 5, your 5 biggest Nintendo news stories in the last 24 hours. And I want to start today by asking for a comment from you folks. I want you to comment down below what is your most anticipated Nintendo Switch title this holiday season. And if there isn't one that you're anticipating, what is one game you wish Nintendo was making but they're not? I also want to know why it's your most anticipated or why you wish Nintendo would make a certain game that they maybe are not making right now. Let me know all that down in the comments below, and then let's dive into today's news. We got stuff, an update on the Bayonetta 3 voice actor boycott situation, because the voice of the Bayonetta's in Bayonetta 3 has now responded. We also have some updates on some review scores coming in for major games coming to Switch this week from Sparks of Hope and Persona 5 Royale, and so much more. So without further ado, let's get into the news. And our first story today deals with a couple review scores. So Sparks of Hope is sitting right around an 85 on Metacritic, which is exactly what, well, Kingdom Battle got, which tells you, one, the quality is highly consistent between the two titles, and two, that Sparks of Hope was utterly fantastic. I don't need to tell you that, because you know what? I already did. You can go ahead and watch my Sparks of Hope review I published yesterday. That's right. I reviewed the game, so if you're hearing this news for the first time and you didn't know I actually reviewed it, I did. Link down in the description for that. Also, we found out that Persona 5 Royale got a 93 on Metacritic. Whew, that's really, really high. And yes, this is an older game. It's curious, obviously, the scores are so high. I don't know if they're taking in context that they are charging full price for an older game that is not that same price everywhere else. Or maybe they did take it into consideration and they went, hey, a great game is a great game, regardless of what they're going to charge for it. So it appears the port is very, very well done, and that's always good news for people looking for high-quality third-party games on Switch. Reminder that Persona 5 Royale releases on Friday and Sparks of Hope releases on Thursday. So... 48 hours of great games coming to Nintendo Switch this week. So yesterday we talked about the boycott happening with Bayonetta 3 over the original voice actor, Helena Taylor, and obviously some of the context or missing context around that situation. And I stayed pretty neutral on it. I'm not really sure where to go. The truth is usually somewhere in the middle. Well, the current voice actor for Bayonetta 3 that was slammed by Helena Taylor Jennifer Hale has finally made a public statement in spite of the fact that she is under NDA, and here's what she had to say. With regard to Bayonetta 3, as a longtime member of the voice acting community, I support every actor's right to be paid well and have advocated consistently for this for years. Anyone who knows me or has followed my career will know that I have great respect for my peers and that I am an advocate for all members of the community. I am under an NDA, and I'm not at liberty to speak regarding this situation. My reputation speaks for itself. I sincerely ask that everyone keep in mind that this game has been created by an entire team of hardworking, dedicated people, and I hope everyone will keep an open mind about what they've created. Finally, I hope that everyone involved may resolve their differences in an amicable and respectful way. With love and respect to all of you, Jennifer. Hale. And what you're really seeing here is naturally Jennifer Hale, who did work on this game, massively disagrees with the idea that it should be boycotted because Helena Taylor feels like she was underpaid. She also seems to sort of infer that the problems here are more personal than they are necessarily pay related, that maybe there is something behind the scenes going on between Platinum Games, Nintendo, and Helena Taylor that isn't really about the pay she doesn't explicitly say that, but she basically says they have some differences that she really hopes gets resolved. Uh, but this is irrespective of the work being done on the game and that we shouldn't disrespect all the other people who worked really, really hard on the game, Jennifer Hale included. And obviously, Jennifer Hale has a long history of actually fighting for better rates for voice actors. While she is one of the most hired voice actors in all of gaming, she also has been a big advocate for higher rates. She is actually one of the key people that help get the union rates to what they are, which is roughly what you know, Helena Taylor was offered, who hasn't really done voice work in eight years. So she was being offered rates that are consistent with the rates that Jennifer Hale fought for in the very first place. So it's really interesting, and I don't really know where to go with this. We don't have enough context. 
And you want to be really careful, I think, on the internet of getting extremely angry one way or another when you only have a partial story without the full context. As I always tell everyone in situations like this, context is king, and we literally don't have context for the complaint. We just have the complaint. So take that for what it is. And let's get into our next story. So yesterday we told you that Nintendo Switch Sports was down for nearly four days with online play to an update last week that added a major bug to online play. Well, today Nintendo has updated the game to version 1.2.2, which has eliminated the Nintendo Switch Sports online bug. Now, Nintendo did feel a little bad about having on online play for that game down for three days, so they actually extended everyone's Nintendo Switch Online membership by an additional week. It doesn't seem to matter if you own the game or not. They're just extending it an extra week. So, hey, good guy Nintendo doing the thing they didn't have to do, but they're doing it, and I kind of like it. You know, hey, a week is a week. It's, it's better than just nothing, I suppose. Now, our last story deals with a fan-created mod around Super Mario Sunshine because... Believe it or not, there's a version of Delfino Plaza you have likely never played. There was an active demo at Space World 2001 that showed a beta version of Delfino Plaza, and that's not the final version of it that actually appeared in Mario Sunshine. So somebody went ahead and painstakingly recreated Delfino Plaza based on this demo at Space World 2001, so now you can actually get something that hasn't been able to be been experienced for nearly 18 years. That is awesome, and I'm really glad that this now exists. We'll put a full detail in the videos and all that down in the description for those that want to see it. Also, a reminder, hey, you know what? If you really want to play Mario Sunshine, you can play it on your Switch today. Believe it or not, despite Nintendo saying they were not going to be doing this, you can still buy brand new copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars at your local retailer. That's right, almost every retailer has many, many physical copies. As it appears, Nintendo never stopped printing the physical version. They just pulled the digital. Why, when digital makes them more, beats me. Why Nintendo hasn't made a public comment on it, I don't know, but hey, go buy Mario 3D All-Stars if you really wanna play the final version of it, because hey, it's actually pretty good. I gotta say, and this one's in HD, so it's even a little bit better. So there you go. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning in for today's Prime 5. You guys are amazing and awesome. Remember to keep staying classy out there and like and subscribe. We'll catch you guys in that next video.